Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, she's gonna try to get through this this I episode. I am. I am losing my voice. Yeah, that's not a good thing. No, no. Allergies suck, and they're like stop saying on my vocal cords or something. So I, there'll be no singing for me in the near future, and I can try to talk. This is why she wasn't in videos yesterday, guys. She's not feeling too great and she's kind of losing her voice, but we're gonna try to get through this one. We're gonna talk about WandaVision and how it might uh, rebalance the Scarlet Witch, because uh, I think she was incredibly nerfed in the MCU mm -hmm. and it seems like they are trying to uh, bring the Scarlet Witch to the forefront, making her more powerful than Carol Danvers. How, well, how dare they? are they though? Because now they're trying to uh, you know up the power on Carol Danvers too. In the comics, yeah, they're trying to. It seems like we got dueling, dueling uh, powerful ladies here at Marvel. Uh, we have Wanda Vision, which uh, Kevin Feige has gone record as saying that uh, Wanda is the most powerful. Well, uh, a lot of people will tell you that Wanda is the most powerful. Oh flat yeah, out. yeah. And uh, then Marvel Comics turns around and gives her like everybody else's powers to make sure you know. Carol's the best. Well, they. I think. I think I'm hearing now that Wanda's going to be in Spider-Man Three. Yeah. Okay. So the, the rumor with Spider-Man Three is it's going to tie into obviously the multiverse. There have been a lot of talks about uh, you know old old Spider-Men coming back mm -hmm. and uh, villains coming back. Daredevil in it, and uh, it would make sense hey, if, if Wanda's in it. If it was a Netflix it. Daredevil, I'd be more than happy to see that. Well, that's the rumor. Yes. Uh, we all know it's going to happen, but we're going to. may not like that a lot. <laughs> we're going to talk about. Uh, WandaVision, we haven't really talked about it too much on this channel. Got some opinions about the show. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about all this stuff. Before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, we're over 174,000. Almost at 175, which Yay. is like a kind of a milestone, that I is. guess. I guess. Hit 200. Yeah, yeah. So what kind of kicked this off? Well, one, everybody's talking about WandaVision. Yeah. Uh, we were actually kind of late to the party. We didn't watch it right away. No, uh, mostly because we were just kind of bored with Disney Plus. And yeah, yeah, it was kind of like, yeah, because I was excited about the show like a year ago. And then I just kind of my, it was one of those things where it's like you hear about it for so long that you're just kind of yeah. done by the time it, it comes out. And so it took us a little while to watch it. Um, you know, the first couple episodes, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you the truth. I was I was like, okay, this is kind of funny, but it's also kind of boring, and I don't know where it's going. Yeah, basically how we watched it was we watched one and two, and then we waited a couple weeks to watch three and four. Yeah. So we watched one and two, and one. And, I'm with you. Uh, one and two, a lot of people are arguing, oh, no, I love the slow pacing of it. And that's okay. You're allowed to like that. That's cool. Understand it. Um, I, I think they're going too much for the gag of, look, it's retro TV. And they inserted some stuff in there, but it was really slow. Yeah, um, yeah, it was. I mean, I was excited about the show at first because I, I do love Scarlet Witch and Vision from the Avengers comics. I read them as a kid. Uh, well, actually, my first introduction to to the Avengers was, I think, through the Vision Quest storyline, which this seems like they're, they're uh -oh, kind, of riff, was... <laughs> kind of riffing on that a little bit oh, here. No. But uh, I started reading Avengers and West Coast Avengers after that because I love that storyline so much. And it was a, it was a big crossover event. You know, they mm -hmm. had, you know, different comics. Oh, over. imagine that crossover yeah. events. Like that never happens. But it was one that, that worked. Uh, cause really I hadn't, I'd read some Avengers and Captain America with, uh, uh, secret wars, uh, secret wars is actually kind of what got me into the, the Marvel comics anyway, because of the action figures. And then from there I went into just reading Spider-Man and X-Men. And then I kind of got you know, branched out a little bit back in the day. You could buy all the comics that wouldn't break the, bank mm -hmm. and now it does but the one thing that always bothered me about the mcu and and what kind of got me thinking about this was rob liefeld uh former well i guess he's gonna be working on marvel again but uh you know a pretty well-known marvel comics artist saying that uh wanda in the comics has always been the most powerful mcu character which is true and i was incredibly disappointed when they brought her to the mcu and she basically was just a girl that could shoot red electrical bolts well that and she could like change your mind like you put memories yeah. in it, you control your mind or whatever but that's about all they they really didn't use her like they should have no and same with quicksilver you know they offed him in ultron now there's there are rumors that he's coming back or whatever but frankly as far as quicksilver is concerned x-men did it better that that <laughs> yeah. is true they, they did it way better and that whole thing was complicated because i guess there were some ownership issues where 
since Quicksilver was an Avenger and he was also in the X Men, mm-hmm. that like Disney and Fox had joint ownership, and now that they own the whole shebang, they can do with them whatever they want to do. Maybe they'll just bring them back. Um, who knows? Anyway, uh, Wanda. It looks like they are trying to to redeem her a little bit. Well, you kind of got the idea in the Infinity Gauntlet. She had more power because they were using her to just she could destroy the stone. Yeah. Yeah, with Vision. Yeah. So you kind of started to see it. But, you know. Yeah, they, she really was underused. Um, Vision and Scarlet Witch, they just kind of shoehorned them They really them were into, underused. Yeah, they were major, major members of the Avengers. Huge characters in their own right. They had their own spinoff comics and everything. And they were just very much like C-list characters in the Avengers movies. Now, I get you can't spotlight everybody. Right, right. But it was good to see that they were going to do something with them, given how important they are to the, the Marvel Comics universe. Well, let, before we go any further, we probably should mention there's probably be spoilers because when we talk about some stuff, I'm sure it's going to hit spoiler territory. Yeah, you just spoiled you just spoiled a four or five year old Avengers movie for people. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean like about the WandaVision, shot. yeah. So like you kind of do get, so just telling you spoilers now, just, okay. So with WandaVision, you kind of do get to see them together more, but it's done in a way that it's not really them together. It's them it TV shows, which isn't the same thing, and then they have dead. You have Dead Vision show up. Spoiler. Um. Yeah. Which I. <laughs> you warned them. You I warned did. Them. Yeah. In episode four. So I'm just like you know. So that if you didn't already figure it out that it was probably you know Wanda or someone controlling Wanda, then I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. So there's gonna be a lot of talk about this because I, I saw on the the Mary Sue and Sci-Fi actually did a story on this like two years ago, talking about how Scarlet Witch is one of the most. Uh, I guess, mentally fragile characters in the MCU because of her immense power and mm-hmm. the ability to to warp reality. Right, and the fact that, you know, she suffered some major... Oh, yeah. You know, things that would break a normal person. Right, right. You know, but a normal, this person, but on top of having powers, what happens? Uh, well, okay, so if they're going to go the uh, the Vision Quest route, uh, the, the kids aren't real and they disappear. But apparently... Marvel brought them back at some point as members of the Young Avengers. So they were real after all, and they had Avengers disassembled, and this whole thing is it's a mess. So don't get too attached to the kids, is is what I'm Well, I think everybody's you. figuring that out. Obviously it's in her head. Right. You know, right. you already kind of established that when she's like no and stuff gets reset. So you kind of already figure and she's behind it. But um yeah, so they're all talking about mental health issues and stuff. I don't think that that WandaVision does a disservice to mental health issues. No. At all. Not yet, anyway. I just think that they're basically like, I think everybody's kind of figuring that because of what's going on with her, that she might be, you know, what, she can't take it and she's trying to make her own reality. Yeah. I mean, this is this is in the comics, guys. This is uh, this has been the, the uh, center of several major storylines in the comics that Wanda's got immense, immense power, but she has a hard time coping with it, coping with reality. Well, they're afraid at the Mary Sue that they're going to make her the bad guy. I don't think they are. I think that they're they're going to make it if, if somebody isn't controlling her, which they're kind of alluding that they might be because of some of the the commercials and stuff they have in there. Yeah, yeah, so, the Hydra, the yeah. Hydra commercials. So yeah, so either she's being controlled by that, or if there is no bad guy, and it's just her. I don't think that makes her bad. That makes her a villain. I mean, yeah, she's holding a bunch of people hostage apparently, and you know, making them do her bidding. But you know, I don't think it's done from a a, a place of. You know, yeah, yeah, like, I don't know. We'll see what happens, but, you know. Yeah, so the Mary Sue's like, you know, oh, she's uh, got mental illness and, uh, you know, and I'm not I'm not mocking their article. I, I'm not. I mean, they're talking about mental illness. It is a real thing. Oh, 100%. People, people pressure under the rug too much. I think it needs yeah. to be more discussed more often. Yeah, so, I mean, maybe that's something that they can kind of, I'd say, you know, Disney have a, have a deft hand addressing, but... This is Disney we're talking about. Mm-hmm. You know, if they have a mental a mental illness message, they will beat you over the head with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, all I think that. it would have been beat over the head already, though. So I don't know. We'll see. But um, back to the show itself. Here's the problem with the show. I think besides the fact that the first couple of episodes were slow, it didn't pick up to episode three. This is a show that should have been dropped in one chunk. Yes, uh, we were talking about this the other day, and uh, actually, uh, Jack Schaefer talked about you know people having um so they're not they're not patient they're not patient to see the payoff the problem is is it it, it's not obvious what's going on until but you can't if you can't hook somebody in an episode you're not going to come back to your show it's not about patience it's about the problem is they couldn't give you they couldn't give you the hook until halfway through because it would ruin the uh, you know what they're trying to hide so 
they couldn't do that with this particular show. And what they usually do with a lot of shows or movies is they give you some flashback or something that's you know exciting at the beginning to catch your attention and then you're more willing to wait. It's not that people being impatient so much as it is that it's it's confusing and people might just check out. Like a lot of people checked out Doctor Who, especially in the last yeah. couple of years. They had, well, before Whitaker even, yeah. because it was too much like, look how clever I am and how it's all going to weave together at the end. And people were like, I just don't know what the hell's going on and it's making my head hurt. I don't effing care anymore. Yeah, that's kind of the, uh, you know, I would say this is kind of a problem with a lot of American monthly comics now is they know they're going to bundle all this stuff up for the trades. Mm -hmm. So they don't really focus on making a satisfying chunk, a 32-page chunk of a story anymore. It used to be you could buy a comic, pick it up, beginning, middle, end, basically self-contained, you know, maybe a two-part or something like that, and it was easy to follow. Now it's like, well, we know this is going to be a 100-page paperback. Show so, how clever we are. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter if people are lost on it. But the thing is, you lose people along the way. I agree. And, uh, you know, I said that, you know, as far as this whole, like, you know, twisted reality and all that, the first couple episodes, Legion was vastly more entertaining. Mm -hmm. It was the same kind of like WTF, but I was at least entertained. Yeah. Uh, that being said, it did it did get better in the third episode. Mm -hmm. I thought of WandaVision. You were um, ready to check out after two. I was. I'll be completely honest. I was ready to check out after the first two episodes. I'm like, I'm bored as hell. I, I The gag of, look, it's old TV gets old after. Yeah, it's, it's funny the first time. But now it's like we're doing it again, and we're doing it again. And uh, at least, you know, with the third episode, it felt like there was a little more substance to right. it. Uh, but this does feel like a show that, you know, I, I'm sorry. I think this one should have been dropped in a chunk right, uh, I agree. to binge. It's more like, like I, I think they wanted to go with a Mandalorian format. The Mandalorian is different because they have an overarching story, but each each episode kind of is a self-contained thing too. Yes. And, it, and yes. it's like what you're talking about. And it's a, it keeps your interest. This one, because, yeah, they're self-contained episodes, but they, they definitely are leading to, leading you towards something. And because of that, I think the fact that people, they be more patient with it and they, they, they wait for a payout longer if they could just know they were sitting down watching boom, 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 and I know a beginning to it. The problem is by doing episodic, people, they're going to just like tune out totally or they're going to wait till it's all released to watch it because it, it that's it's going to be more enjoyable that way. Yeah, I think that like you said the reason they're doing it is Disney doesn't want to lose subscribers, mm -hmm. you know, the Netflix because yeah. they don't have a lot of original content right now, so they have to milk whatever they're putting well, out. Well, that there. and someone they put it all if they just stopped it once, everybody would subscribe, watch it and unsubscribe. Yeah. This way they get two months out of you. Right, right. And they, you know, they roll this one out right after The Mandalorian. So they're basically like, we have something new every That's what week. they're trying to do. Because as soon as yeah. this one ends, they're starting Fal uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make sure something every month to try to do it. And some shows that works. But like this one, it really doesn't work very well. And no. um, I know people will disagree and that's okay. You can disagree. But I think that in this in this particular case, they needed to drop it at once. So it made more sense. And, it, you know, people wouldn't get so frustrated with it. And as far as, well, audiences aren't, are impatient. Well, audiences are impatient. But that's just the way people are now. And it's you blame it on whatever. Probably blame it on the internet. Blame it on streaming services mm. because they always give it to you in one chunk or whatever. Um, they're their own worst enemy in that regard. But people are generally more impatient. And knowing that, you need to work towards that market. You, you shouldn't expect everybody to change for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's just it. I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I don't think in this case. Now, I said to you, I said they should have led with Falcon the Winter Soldier, but apparently it was delayed because of the filming, so they flip flopped. Yeah, it was them. supposed to be first. Yeah, because Falcon and Winter Soldier seems more traditional. I think it would have been a better entry into MCU mm -hmm. on TV. Like, oh, that went really well. Kind of Mandalorian ish. Uh, you know, it's just a buddy. It all got, it all got America stuff because the pandemic yeah, and schedules yeah. and stuff. It all got you know switched around. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we'll we'll see how it goes. Um, you know, it, it's so weird though. Like the opinions on this show are so polarized. It's it's crazy. You actually put up a, a fairly positive ish review. You said it, it got wasn't better. until three and four that I was like, okay, yeah, this is game four. I, I think four was really cool too because one thing I found interesting was. Um, it's, it's Monica Rambeau and she showed up at the hospital. She was apparently snapped yeah. and it was really interesting to see how chaotic it was. All these people were reappearing yeah. and you're trying to get any answers, but there's people that you're talking to. They're like, I don't know what's going on. I just reappeared too. And then you don't know what happened because, um, to you, it was just like 20 minutes as she said, but to everybody else, it was several years later. And it was a very interesting, it was an interesting thing. We also got to see sword. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't, I mean, the thing about, you know, people coming back, we didn't see that. 
in Endgame. We just kind of no, like they were getting knew they phone were calls coming in. back. Yeah, but like, how chaotic would it be to be like all of a sudden these people are just appearing wherever they vanished from? And yeah, like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, so it was. It, it's that was interesting. I thought that they should they they should done more with that. I think they probably wanted to in the movie, didn't have time, so they put it in the show. Uh, that was cool. And then we got now we had Shield before. Now we have Sword. And they're here. Yeah. Now, I like, um, I, I, I'm going to be honest, I, I like the girl playing Monica Rambeau. I do, I think, too. I think she can Geraldine pull off. Geraldine slash Monica Rambeau. Geraldine slash Monica Rambeau. Uh, now, we've said before multiple times, we're going to get into the Captain Marvel bit here in a, a minute, but when I was growing up reading the Avengers, Captain Marvel Monica Rambeau was actually the leader mm-hmm. back then when I first started reading Mar- Marvel Comics. And um, this was the 1980s, and we had, at one point, we had... Black women leading both the X Men mm-hmm. and the Avengers. No, no, that can't be true because they only invented diversity a few years ago. Also, all the people who wanted Monica Rambeau, I love how everybody was. Oh, they're just racist and sexist against people, and they're really sexist against Brie Larson and, and Captain Marvel. But then when you look at it, a lot of people are like, "Why are we getting Captain Marvel? Why, why are we getting Carol Danvers? Why aren't we getting Monica Rambeau?" So they were yelling about yeah. about racism the whole time. People, fans were asking for Monica Rambeau. Yeah, I know. It's, so- it's amazing how they twist that, but. Um, yeah, I just want <laughs> just want to talk real quick about uh, you know the the pushback. If you don't like the show, we're already getting people that are like, if you don't like the show, we freaking hate you. Um, well, I, I, yeah, but there was a debate too, like on the one board that if you like it, they're mad at you too. Yeah, I don't. I I mean, this is again, this is look at least from Disney's point of view, it elicits a strong emotional reaction mm-hmm. from people one way or the other uh wdw pro put up a review we actually had two his review went up first he, mm-hmm. then when we got around to watching it you put a review up. yeah i think his is coming more from somebody who like follows it more in depth yeah and mine's yeah. coming up from the general person who just probably just watching it without like a whole bunch of the backstory right but he got my god he got so much hatred for Did not he? liking the show yeah it just again was like what uh, you are allowed to like it you are allowed to not like it welcome to you know 2021 yeah, uh, no, that's not that's not true. If you hate it, you have to be kicked off of social media. That's right. Um, but anyway, it was interesting to see them bring in some other, you know, kind of C and D list characters from the MCU, get another shot at it. Uh, but, um, you know, going back to Captain Marvel, because that was the other part of the video. So we've got them course correcting on Scarlet Witch. She is probably going to be as powerful as she was in the comics, thankfully, because she was completely wasted. And now, not to be outdone, uh, Marvel Comics is like, oh, wait, they're going to make Wanda the most powerful? No, no, we got a plus Carol. Plus Ultra? Plus Ultra. Carol has to go plus Ultra. So this is weird. You said that she's getting basically Thor's powers. Mm -hmm. And she's also at some point... She can call the hammer now. And and she's getting Doctor Strange powers, apparently. And Doctor Strange's powers. And, uh, you know... yeah. I wish she just get the power of personality. She had it. That's what kills me about this. Again, going back to the 80s. Back in the 80s, before Rogue knocked her on her ass, Carol Danvers was actually a pretty likable, okay character. Mm-hmm. You know, she was okay. She was like the most okay-ish character. She wasn't like a huge standout or anything. But, you know, uh, Ms. Marvel, when it was Carol Danvers, she was all right. And, you know, people didn't hate on her or whatever. It wasn't until they brought her back and made her the ultra Mary Sue and forced you to like her even when her book got canceled repeatedly. And she kept looking more and more and more like a dude, you know, as time mm-hmm. went on, which is so interesting. Oh my God. The one she looked like, uh, Jay. Jay yes. <laughs> she did. I was like, what is going oh on God. here? Now it seems like they're kind of going back to, you know, uh, hot Carol again, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but it's, I, but I don't she's really got care about that powers. so much, but as, yeah, as, as she's taken, as she's suddenly getting everybody's powers. She can, because I, I know everybody was expecting her to call the hammer in um, Endgame, and she didn't. Captain America did. But and she everybody could have loved. If she everybody to. loved that. They went nuts. Crowds, you know, theaters erupted in applause. And now um, we have to make sure she can call it too, because she's you know just that special. So, uh, so she's basically like Kirby, Nintendo Kirby. She just uh, sucks at everything, but she gets everybody's powers. Mm-hmm. Pretty um, much. <laughs> you know? but she doesn't have to eat people for it. She doesn't have to eat anybody for it. Oh, no, she'll get Galactus's powers, too. Mm-hmm. She'll be able to eat anybody she wants to. That's right. Because um, um, uh, that's her, her prerogative. You can eat whoever you want to in 2021. I'm, I'm, not, take their even, powers. I'm not touching that one. Okay, uh, go ahead. Take their mojo. Anyway, um, yeah, so it is interesting to see how they're trying to, to... Now, I don't know if one has anything to do with the other, but... 
you know, they will not let Carol fail in the comics. Like it's it's, but the writing's well, they can't on, because they're trying to make her no matter what be the bestest ever in the movies. Yeah, and they're gonna retcon that and be like, oh, the Marvel Universe was named for Captain Marvel, which is Carol Danvers first. Uh, meanwhile, the MCU, you can kind of see where they're going with it with the introduction of Monica, you know, um, with with them beefing up Scarlet Witch to be the most powerful mm-hmm. character. I am sorry, Brie Larson, you're on borrowed time. Well, it's funny you to are. me because we remember too. Uh, and you see it with the way Disney behaves. Back then, the whole the whole pander was pander women, women, women. Women are the bestest mm-hmm. ever, right? And that's what we saw Disney do in a lot of places too. Well, now since 2020, it's the Black Lives Matter movement, baby. So now they're trying to switch everything up to be focused on that. Well, what well, that's what Monica Rambeau's are for. People were asking for Monica to begin with. Yeah, but you're just a bunch of racist uh, alt right Yahtzees, right? Um, and everybody's like, "No, you actually had a good a good character, in Monica." Now, what's problematic though? Is Monica was a cop. I don't know how they're gonna. How they're well, gonna, they didn't mention that. They didn't mention that. No, they did not. So, uh, yeah, I think that's gonna get that's gonna get retconned. Mm-hmm. Can't have that. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's gonna be interesting to watch again. You know, my personal opinion is it started out slow. It got. It got better. There's And then there's um, a trailer for the second half out now. I put it in my review. Um, it looks like it's going to get even more interesting. And we're going to get more and more about what's going on. So um, I think it's going to get better from here on out. And it might be now from here on out, it might work episodically better than it did. But because the way you started so slow, you probably lost a lot of people. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think, I think this is one that's going to sit out there, though. I think that even if they lost people they're going to come back and they'll just binge it. Right. That's what I'm, I'm going to recommend. If you, yeah. you aren't sure about it and you don't want it to be slow, I recommend either you can go into it now so it's at least picked up and it makes a little more sense or just wait till it's finished and then watch it all at once. Yeah. Either way, I, I'm glad to see that they're they're uh, doing Wanda good mm-hmm. because I think they did her dirty. I just want to know where her accent went. Yeah, everybody asked about that. Because uh, she had a thick accent, and then as each movie progressed, she lost it completely. Mm-hmm. Uh, very, very uh, weird choice, I think, to do. I always pictured in the comics, I always pictured her as having an accent. Um, oh, well. Because you get that from a comic? <laughs> I get that from the comics, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Was it because of the way they worded stuff? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I think. I, I, I was like, just from the art, when, like, like, oh, wow, well, that Quick- person's got an accent. Well, no. same with Quicksilver. I always pictured, you know, Pietro. I always thought he would have some kind of an accent. And they talk about the European heritage mm-hmm. and all. I, I just, I, in my head, my head canon, uh, you know, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch had, had European accents. I always pictured her sounding like the Baroness. From G.I. Joe, <laughs> kind of. That's in my head. That's how she sounded. But I don't know. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Okay, so please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Bye.